It's a really hugely important motorcycle for BMW, in my opinion. Um, replaces, I think it's fair to say, a bike that has probably been in production for a little bit too long. They, they, they introduced the original F800R in 2009. That is a 10-year-old bike now. And I, think, I don't think BMW would complain too much if we suggested it was getting a bit long in the tooth. Um, and, and of course, when you see that, because it's sort of like fallen out of like interest, really. I think. Oh isn't yeah, it? and and you know that's reflected in the kind of offers that BMW have been have been rolling out of late on that particular motorcycle. I mean, safe in the knowledge they knew the new one was coming. Um, but yeah, um, a very very important motorcycle. Given that in that intervening intervening period, that market has become huge. Right, middleweight bikes now are such an important sector for all the major manufacturers. I've got to say, BMW have really put their best foot forward with this bike. Haven't they just? And on, on, on specification alone, I mean, it's just it's just massive. And actually for like a really uh, super competitive price taken into account, the competition. You, every time we've, we've looked and talked about this bike, because obviously we saw this bike for the first time in Italy two weeks ago at yeah. Eichmer. Um, I mean, this, this, there are so many, but sort of, losses for this motorcycle but the thing that really kind of shouts the loudest is the value for money um, and it's a, it's a little bit unfair really to kind of talk about that in too much detail because you, it's almost like you're you're kind of uh, d diminishing all the other benefits of having a bike like this from BMW but you, you can't argue with the fact that when you when you when you uh, offer the entry-level bike on this on this product 8395 it's just unbelievable value for money. You know, you buy yourself a BMW and I know... Yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, that, and, and you kind of hit the nail on the head really with that because BMW is a premium brand, it's a premium manufacturer. You know, I've, I've like, even if you look at the cars, you know, I've owned Honda cars, I've owned other, you know, sort of car, and then I've, you know, I've also owned a BMW and even on spec form, you know, if the cars are like pretty similar, you jump into BM, there's a yeah. difference. There and is every, a difference. Every, I think everybody who rides a BMW ends up, yeah, but you know, it's not a BMW, whether that's the switch gear, whether that's the way it rides, whether it's the way it brakes, the, you know, it just works. And yeah. on specification form, okay, they might not shout the loudest, you know, like weight on this bike is yeah. 211, 211. 211 kilos wet. Um, but it will be 211 kilos. Well, oh. I mean, some of the manufacturers, I mean, I think they take them into outer space yeah. when they weigh them. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And, and of course, when it's in it a gravity comes, box. Yeah, it's in a, yeah exactly. <laughs> um, so, you know, everything they say about it will be the case. Oh, yeah, yeah they're conservative, aren't they? Yeah, they are, they are. And, and uh, conservative on the side of accurate. Yes. Um, but you, you, yeah, you cannot get away from that. And, and uh, the risk of sounding like a massive BMW fanboy. Uh, you, what you get with this bike at that price is just outrageous to be honest yeah. and, and and they've been very deliberate about that you know they want to they want to side into that market and say you know potential Yamaha buyers potential Triumph buyers potential Kawasaki buyers you've got to look at our bike and what they've also done of course in terms of a styling exercise if you put the old F800 next to this this is a huge leap forward yes. you know it is a really good looking bike I mean Jeff is, has never been a massive, he's always liked his jack bikes, hasn't he? For the first time, I dragged him over to the stand in Italy and he's absolutely loving this thing. Is he? You know, proportions are right. Um, you know, the whole sort of design language of this bike is a big step forward. And again, the sit on it feels feels nice. Riding position is great. Yeah. Um, and of course, the tech that comes with the bike. Now, obviously, the entry level bike is at 8.3. We've been talking to one of our um, one of the, uh, the representatives on the BMW stand over the last couple of days. He's been kind enough to, to, to give us a bit of an inside track on the spec because the, the, the bike's going to sell is the sport. And yeah. this is the sport model. Actually, in my opinion, it's got the nicest colorway as well. It's got the nicest selection of bits and pieces on it. So, but the spec list is just, it's ludicrous. Yeah, it is. It's so, in fact, it's so long that I've got the actual official spec book here. And I mean, just to give you an idea, uh, BMW Motorrad ABS, a, a, ASD stability control, TFT with connectivity. And, we, and obviously the guys have been kind enough to turn it on this morning. How cool is that TFT display? It's the best TFT I've seen on a motorbike, you know, and of course as well, it's operated with this really nice dial that's sort of um, yeah. on most of the BMW there, there is an actual There is an actual uh, term for that and I can't remember it either, but it, wor it works well, really thanks, intuitively. Like, useful, uh, yeah. mark. But, um, so the TFT works really well. It looks really good. It's super bright, uh, works really well. You've even got a lap timer on this, which I think is just like, well, it's got it's, lean angle sensor. Yeah. It's got it's got brake pressure sensor, so it tells you how much how much lever pressure you're applying. Yeah. Lap timer. It, the connectivity means that you can you can run sat nav through it. You can run your phone as through standard. It. Yeah, as and standard. That, that's really great.
say, but, I, I think that's so cool. You just have to have the BMW app on your phone. It yes. Will connect. Yeah, yeah. It's and got you, uh, the, the Sport, he also said, has got um, automatically adjusting suspension, yeah. which I think for like nine and a half grand, grand. which is what yeah. it's going to cost. Yeah. So retail price 9485 on this bike. I can't think of any other of the competitors that are sort of doing that level of tech for this price. And then you chuck into the account that's a BMW and it's going to. You know, do what it says on the tin. Ah. You know, this is this is this is going to be a really hot seller, and I think a lot of our sort of audience and customers are going to be seriously interested in this well, bike. I've, I've got to say, you know, as I mentioned before, the risk of us kind of going round and round it, it is a crucial sector. You know, this is a very very important motorcycle, in my opinion, for, for BMW, and the, and I, I genuinely feel that they're they're offering a really really competitive product right now. Yeah. Because this market is so competitive. You know, you look at the the equivalent bikes out there. There's some fantastic machinery. You know, we've already we've already been on to KTM looking at their new 890 right quite like you quite rightly said Triumph 765 is, 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 is a very very well received motorcycle Kawasaki make a very good middleweight bike you know there's, there's so many good products out there how do you differentiate yourself well I've got to say BMW have done a very good made a very good effort of that so it's got 105 Five horsepower, horsepower yeah. uh, twin it's a parallel twin, so, parallel so, to twin. The, so the engine has been lifted out of the old bike, but it's a vastly different engine. Really great amount of power for a yeah. bike like this, in my opinion. It's about the perfect, I know we've talked a lot about Hyper Naked, Super Naked. Yeah. You know, th this engine is going to be great. Yeah, I mean, it, look, it offers, it offers more performance than the previous bike. Yes, the, the curb weight is slightly up, but um, it's got a low center of gravity. Another thing with this, it's got a plastic fuel tank. I think it's yeah. 13 liters. So of course, it, you know, all the weight is at the bottom of the bike. So yes. you know the center of gravity is going to be low, which improves handling and sharpness and agility. Um, and as I say, the, the spec on the Sport, and that will be the key product. That's that spec of bike, quick shifter, um, a massive suite of electronics on it. It's even got heated grips. Oh, I love heated grips. Um, we just wanted to get a second opinion. Obviously, uh, the, the bike hasn't been sort of released to the to the to the pr press yet for road testing. But you have been lucky enough to ride the bike, and a little bit in anger, as I understand it. Could you just t sort of tell us a little bit about what it what it rides like? Yeah, absolutely. So we were yeah lucky enough to go and ride this on the on the launch videos and the promo videos over yeah. in Croatia. Wow. Um, and yeah, first of all, the new motor is awesome. If you've right. ever ridden the old F800R, it was it was a good bike, but it was starting to feel a little flat. And this, the new 850 motor in these 900s has got so much more drive and mid-range. Right. It's kind of woken the whole bike up. Yes. So it's kind of now, instead of wringing its neck everywhere, you're now kind of always got a ton of torque. Doesn't matter what gear you're in. It you goes. Just yeah. absolutely goes. Any I think, gear. I think that's been the biggest change for me is that now you've got so much mid-range. Yes. You're not up and down the gears all the time. You just yeah, it's made it a nicer road bike. So you, you can kind of really hustle the bike as well as it being a kind of tourer. And it, I mean, it, it ticks multiple different boxes now, I think. Yeah, absolutely. And it's kind of, it's marketed as a sort of bit more of an aggressive street bike yeah. now than the old one. And and it does just that, you know, we, we, we were lucky to go and play in a big warehouse. So we, we did a lot of big, fast road riding and it was it was lovely on that big, beautiful, flowy bend. Right. And then, yeah, we had a big warehouse to play in as well with skids and stunts and, and a few jumps as well. I don't know if they made the final cut. And, and in that circumstances, it was, yeah, quite a playful bike, I think. So, I mean, it's, uh, kind of aside from the riding experience, the massive change in terms of the style. So, what, I guess what they're trying to do is kind of match up that more aggressive look and profile with the way the bike rides as well, I guess. Absolutely, yeah. And, um, and the F800R was kind of the bike had been around a long time, you know. And in all honesty, I think a lot of people had forgotten it existed. You well, know? it's like ten years, I think, ten year anniversary. It's quite a long time for BMW, particularly. Exactly, and and so when this came out, yeah, like I say, it needed a new styling. It needed a kind of and, and a bit more of a shift towards a younger, yes. more sporty market, which BMW has changed. You know, in the last decade, they've come that that, that more sporty, more aggressive way. Absolutely, I think this has got a massively wider appeal than the previous bike. It looks modern, it feels modern, and obviously, based on what you're telling us, it, it rides in a much more contemporary way. Exactly that, and and again, like with the, all the new BMWs now, you've got TFT dash, yeah. you've got rider mode, you've got all of those kind of creature comforts that we've come to expect that then make. A fast performance street bike, yes, really usable on a day to day basis. Brilliant, perfect, thank you very much. Every BM that I've ridden, and I've ridden a few now actually, which I'm you catching up with me, yeah, I'm catching up, not quite there yet. <laughs> um, but I've always come off and thought that the brakes are really sorted, and this looks to be no different. It's yeah. got you know Brembo's, so we can assume that that will be the same deal. Yeah, it's got um, S21 Bridgestone tires, yeah. which are really good tire, they the same ones fit to that Osvana. Um, Pillin 701, yeah, really great in the dry. Yes, I think you know, 
there's probably slightly stickier options in the cold and wet, but in the dry, they're absolutely fantastic. But, well, look, here's a thought, Mark, right? So um, I know I've just mentioned Vip Pillin 701, yeah. and I've been riding it for a month, and that is a, that has probably been my favorite bike the whole year. Yeah. Right. But Stop that talking now, about it now. 2020, that's going to be nine grand. Yeah. How do you think, you know, when you're talking about the sport variant with all its rider modes, with another 35 horsepower, yeah. For it's interesting, basically it? another 500 quid. I mean, it's this is really um, a great value Look, bike. You, the, can't, you can't underestimate that. Do you know, do you know, do you know what? I mean, the, the, the bottom line here is it's a great time to think about buying a new bike, upgrading your existing bike. If, you, you know, if, if you're new to the motorcycle world and you're thinking about a middleweight bike, you, have, you are spoiled for choice right now. There is so much good product on the market. Yeah. You know, all of these new products have been released because of the Euro, you know, now because they've, they've got their heads around Euro 5 legislation. And as a result, you know, we're seeing more powerful bikes, we're seeing lighter bikes, we're seeing phen phenomenal value bikes. And this to me is, is very much, in, in kind of encapsulates all of those things. Yes. Um, and, and you know, you know that I'm in the market. I'm always in the market for a new bike. Right? I can't help myself. And you know, I, I mean, I, ultimately, um, I'm, I'm probably looking at changing in 12 months. But in the interim, I'm going to definitely want to ride this bike. Definitely yeah. want to try it. And it, it, is, it is a serious contender for me. What's also interesting, of course, is that the, this kind of sister brother bike, the XR, has just been launched as well. I know we're going to talk about that in another video. So that you've got a couple of yeah, this platform is creating a couple of different really interesting options for you know new buyers, potential buyers in the market for for a middleweight style of motorcycle. So I uh, hope you've enjoyed that little first look at the F900R from BMW. Please like, please comment. We'd love to hear what you think about this bike. And I think uh, we both know that this is going to be an important bike for 2020. No doubt. Um, so please subscribe to the channel too. And we'll see you on the next video.